The GALS screen is a rapid musculoskeletal, neurological and functional assessment. For a quick history, ask about pain or stiffness in the muscles, joints or back, whether they can dress themselves without difficulty, and whether they can walk up and down stairs without difficulty. If the answer to all three questions is OK, there is unlikely to be a significant musculoskeletal problem. Ask the patient to undress and stand in front of you, during which you may make many useful observations. Could you walk towards me? Ask the patient to walk ahead in a straight line for several steps, turn around and walk back. Could you do that again for me, please? Watch from both in front and behind, looking for smoothness and symmetry of the gait. Could I have a look at your back? Palpate for hyperalgesia in the belly of the supraspinatus muscle. Is that sore? No. Hyperalgesia here is a typical finding in fibromyalgia. How about that? No. When asking a patient to exhibit movements, it's often simpler to demonstrate actions rather than only telling them what to do. Please copy the movement I make with my arms. This position with the hands behind the head and the elbows going back tests abduction and external rotation of the glenohumeral joint. With the elbows at the side of the body, bend them at 90 degrees. Ask the patient to demonstrate the full range of pronation and supination. Bringing the hands up to touch the shoulders requires elbow flexion. Opposing the fingers and palms in a prayer sign, bend the wrists back as far as possible, and then put the backs of the hands together in a similar fashion. This demonstrates wrist extension and flexion. Put the arms straight out in front of the body to demonstrate elbow extension. Ask the patient to make a fist and to open the hand flat, testing the hand and wrist. Look for complete extension of all the finger joints. Please relax your arms. Ask the patient to squeeze your index and middle fingers, testing their power grip. Please make a pincer grip. And don't let me break it. Test the ability and strength of thumb and index finger opposition. Please touch each finger to your thumb. Performing this test demonstrates precision grip coordination and concentration. Gently squeeze the patient's metacarpal heads. Tenderness suggests inflammation involving the metacarpophalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints, caused, for example, by rheumatoid arthritis. Is this sore? No. GALS is an acronym standing for gait, arms, legs and spine. The next section is legs. Ask the patient to lie supine on the couch and adjust it where necessary. Remember that some parts of lower limb examination may risk dislocation of a total hip replacement, therefore are best avoided in this circumstance. We're going to start with Thomas's test for fixed flexion deformity of the hip, testing hip extension if you like. With the patient lying supine, you can see that he can't extend his hips any further because of the couch supporting his knees and ankles. When performing Thomas's test, we flex the lumbar spine and pelvis so that hip hyperextension is required to put the lower limb flat on the couch. Your left hand in the small of the patient's back can detect when the lumbar lordosis is straightened. I'm going to bend your knees. Flex both hips as far as they will go, feeling as you do that the lumbar spine flattens against your left hand. Could you straighten your left leg for me? Putting the left lower limb flat on the couch with the lumbar spine still flexed shows a few degrees of hyperextension of the left hip. In fixed flexion deformity, the limb will remain elevated or curvature will return to the spine. Could you bend your knee for me? Examine the range of flexion in the hip and knee with your hand on the patient's knee. This allows you to feel for crepitus in the patellofemoral joint. Could you bend this knee for me? The normal limit of flexion is 120 degrees at the hip and 140 degrees at the knee. Could you bend this knee for me? 
flex the patient's knee and hip to 90 degrees and passively rotate each hip internally and externally. Think about the anterior of the thigh when working out which direction is which. Could you bend your left knee? Be careful to do this test gently. It may be uncomfortable for the patient. Note any pain or restriction of movement. The normal range is 45 degrees in each direction. Palpate each knee for warmth and swelling. These are features of inflammation. Check for the patella tap caused by a knee joint effusion. With your left hand, milk the contents of the suprapatellar pouch into the joint. Look at the feet for any abnormality. Examine the soles, looking for calluses or ulcers, indicative of abnormal load bearing. Remember to look at the backs of the heels, which can be a site of pressure sores in bed-bound patients. Look at the alignment of the toes and gently squeeze the metatarsal heads together. Is this sore? No. To see if there is any tenderness from inflammatory arthritis. And this? No. I'm now going to examine your back. I'm just going to lower the couch. Now we move on to the final section, spine. We need the patient standing again. Lower the couch to a height that is safe for them to climb off. Let me give you a hand up. Could you stand here for me please? With your legs slightly apart. Standing behind the patient, assess the straightness of the spine. Look at the symmetry and muscle bulk in the neck upper limbs, trunk, and lower limbs. Look for asymmetry in the level of the iliac crests, which may be due to leg shortening. Look for swelling or other abnormality of the gluteal, hamstring, and calf muscles. Look at the Achilles tendons and hindfoot regions for swelling or deformity. Could you try and touch your toes? Stand beside the patient while they bend down, as well as spinal flexion. Look for exacerbation of scoliosis or limitation of hip flexion. Stand behind the patient and hold their pelvis to stop it moving. Could you turn from side to side? This tests rotation movement happening mostly in the thoracic spine. Could you slide your right hand? down the outside of your right thigh towards your knee and the same on your left side testing lateral flexion which occurs mostly in the lumbar spine could you turn to face me can you try and put your right ear to your right shoulder lateral cervical flexion and the same on your left look up at the ceiling cervical extension and down to your chest and flexion please look straight ahead can you open your mouth and move your jaw from side to side testing function in the temporomandibular joint thank you <laughs>